We've all heard our divisibility rules, how to check whether a number is divisible by 2, 3, 4, whatever. Now in this video, let's try to understand why divisibility rules work. Okay, and this has been something uh, I emphasize to my students and something that I've followed in my life that I've, I've asked a lot of whys. Of course, I have not asked a lot of otherwise <laughs> but still i think i've asked more wise than a lot of, a lot of people ask <clears throat> and and i think that that has really helped me gain clarity build confidence uh, develop depth okay so this is something that i recommend but let's in this video try to understand why divisibility rules work so the first divisibility rule is number is divisible by two if the unit digit is divisible by two so if you're looking at a number let's say uh, okay, let me turn on the pen. So if we're looking at a number 47269, whether this number is divisible by 2, now you don't need to divide the whole number by 2. The rule is that you can just look at the last digit, see that it's not divisible by 2. So you can say that the whole number is not divisible by 2. Okay, this is the rule. Now, the question is, why does this rule work? Why don't... I need to check the remaining part of the number to really understand why whether this number is divisible by 2 or not. Okay, let me explain that. I have asked this question, so I know the answer by now. Uh, and I'm not sure why I know the answer, whether I've seen it somewhere or whether I've derived it. Okay, but uh, I know this and uh, I think with respect to the divisibility rule for 11, I think I have wrestled my way through it. <laughs> so, okay, let me start with 2. So, if you think about it, I can write any number in this way. So, 4, 7, 2, 6 into 10, right? Plus 9, I can write this number as this because this number is essentially 4, 7, 2, 6, 0 plus 9, right? So, I can write the, this as 4, 7, 2, 6 into 10 plus 9. Now, if you think about this one, this is always divisible by 2 because this is a multiple of 10. So definitely it has to be divisible by 2, right? So now the only question is whether this is divisible by 2. If this is also divisible by 2, this part is already divisible by 2, the whole number will be divisible by 2. If this is not divisible by 2 and this is divisible by 2, then the whole number is not going to be divisible by 2. Right? So that is how the divisibility rule works here. Okay, similarly, if I have to check divisibility by 4, I just take the last two digits. <clears throat> and now probably you can try to guess why I look at the last two digits. Okay, so I just need to check whether 69 is divisible by 4 or not. Why do I not need to check uh, whether the remaining part is divisible by 4 or not? Because if you think about it, I can write this number as 47200 0, 0 plus 69. And then that would be 472 into 100 plus 69. So again, 100 is a multiple of 4. So I know for sure that this number is divisible by 4. So I just need to worry about the remaining part. That's why I just look at the last digit. Sorry, so that's why I just look at the last two digits because, yeah, if, if I remove those last two digits, the remaining number is a multiple of 100, which is always divisible by 4. Right? So similarly, you can extend the logic to 8, 16, 32 also. So in case of 8, you look at the last three digits. 4, 7, 2, 6, 9. Why? Because I can write this number as 47,000 plus 269. And then 47,000 I can write as 1000. So I know this number is definitely divisible by 8. Why? Because 1000 is divisible by 8, right? Every 10 is, has a 2. So 3 tens, 1000 has 3 tens, 10 into 10 into 10, right? So it will have 3 2s, so which means 8. So you now just need to worry about this number here. Okay, so that is why I just need to look at one digit in case of two, I just need to look at two digits in case of four, three digits in case of eight, similarly four digits in case of 16, five digits in case of 32. So if you understand where it is coming from, you can extend the logic. 
Now let's look at this divisibility by three. Actually, this divisibility is connected with divisibility by nine. If you think, of, if you look at it, you see that the divisibility rule, the way to find out is the same. We are looking at the sum of all digits. Okay, now why? <laughs> why is it working? Let me explain that. So if you pick any number, let's let's pick this number only. So four, seven, two, six, nine. I can write this number as 440,000 plus 7,000 plus 200 plus 60 plus 9, right? Every number I can open up like this. So this is essentially 4 into 10 to the power 4 plus 7 into 10 to the power 3 plus 2 into 10 to the power 2 plus 6 into 10 plus 9 every number I can write like this now actually I don't need to go through this step to get to the next step if you think about it this is 10,000 right I can open this as 9999 plus 1 okay I, I'll explain why I'm do I am doing this way 9999 plus 1 similarly I can do for the remaining also 9999 Plus one right now since we are looking at divisibility by 9 or 3 if you think about it this number is always going to be divisible by 9 and it's also going to be always divisible by 3 for sure right because every number that is divisible by 9 has to be divisible by 3 so if you think about it, in terms of looking for divisibility by 9, we can safely ignore these numbers. 4 into 9999 plus 7 into 999 plus 2 into 99 plus 6 into 9 because this is definitely divisible by 9. So to check whether this number is divisible by 9, I just need to worry about 4 into 1 which is 4 plus 7 into 1 7 plus 2 plus 6 plus 9 which is the sum of the digits right so every number I can open in this way and and this will always be a multiple of 9 so now only thing that we need to worry about it is whether this number this sum is divisible by 9 or not if you look at this sum this sum is essentially the sum of all the digits in the number Right, so this is divisibility by 9. Similarly, for divisibility by 3, also this part will always be divisible by 3. So now you just need to check for this part whether this part is divisible by 3 or not. So that is why we have these rules. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to understand how using simple math we can understand why these rules work. Okay, so that these rules are not a mystery. Okay, why do they work? I don't know, but just they work. Let me just apply them. Okay, so, so we have now understood why this 3 and 9 divisibility rules work. Now let's look at the divisibility rule for 5. Number is divisible by 5. The unit digit is either 0 or 5. Would you like to attempt why this divisibility rule works? So this is very similar to divisibility rule for uh, 2. Every number I can write, let's say again, let's take the same number. So I can write this as 4726 into 10 plus 9. This is always divisible by 5 for sure, right? Because it's multiple of 10, so it has to be multiple of 5. So the only thing that is that worries me is this last digit which is a unit digit it has to be a multiple of 5 so it can be 0 or 5 right so that is why the divisibility rule for 5 is this divisibility rule for 6 is very straightforward right it's common sense that of course if a number is divisible by, divisible by 2 and it's also divisible by 3 then it has to be divisible by 6 because 6 is 2 into 3 this part is sorted this is a complex one, the divisibility rule by 11. So let me first explain how, what, what this rule is. 
Okay, the rule is, let's say again, let's take the same number. Let me actually increase the number of digits. 4, 7, 2, 6, 9, 3, 5, 4. Let's say this is the number I'm, and I want to evaluate whether this number is divisible by 11 or not. Now the rule is, actually even though it says odd number, even number place digits, what you need to do is, you need to add up alternate digits and sum them. So 4, 2, 9. 5. These are the alternate digits. You add them. So 4 plus 2 plus 9 plus 5. So it comes to 6 plus 9, 15, which is 20. Then you sum the other set of alternate digits. 7, 6, 3 and 4. So here actually, since there were 8 digits in total, we had the same number of digits in both the sums. But that may not be the case always. right? Some cases may have just 7 digits. Uh, so let me add them 7 plus 6 plus 3 plus 4 it turns out 13 16 20 <laughs> so in this case the sum turns out to be exactly the same I did just a fluke 7 plus 6 13 16 20 yeah, it is indeed the same so the next step is you calculate these two sums of alternate digits and then you subtract them okay in this case you get a zero okay the rule is that you subtract the sums and then whatever you get if it is a multiple of 11 it could be a negative multiple of 11 positive multiple of 11 that doesn't matter if it is a multiple of 11 then the number is divisible by 11 if it is not a multiple of 11 then the number is not divisible by 11 Okay, it's a it's a slightly complicated one if you compare it with others other divisibility tools okay so you sum the alternate digits then you subtract the two sums then whatever you get whether it's divisible by 11 or not if it is divisible by 11 then the number is divisible by 11 if it is not divisible by 11 then the number is not divisible by 11 okay so now why this divisibility rule works actually i applied my mind to it <laughs> And I think I came up with something sensible. Let me explain. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to break this number in two ways. Let me explain. Okay, it's going to be a bit complicated. Let me explain. So first is just break them in that form. 4 into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 10 to the power 7 plus 7 into 10 to the power 6 plus 2 into 10 to the power 5. I should have taken a more simple number actually. 6 into 10 to the power 4 plus 9 into 10 to the power 3 plus 3 into 10 to the power 2 plus 5 into 10 to the power 1 plus 4. Okay, now if you think about it, 4 is 4. Wow, what an insight. Uh, 5 into 10, I can write this as 5 into 11 minus 1, right? Basically, I am thinking in terms of divisibility by 11, so I am thinking in terms of 11. Now, let's look at this. This, I can write it as, this is 100, right? So this, I can write as 3 into 99 plus 1. Why 99? Because 99 is a multiple of 11. 9 into 1000. 9 into 1000. Now let's look at 1000. Triple 9 is not a multiple of 11. Okay. 99 is a multiple of 11. 99, 99 is a multiple of 11. But 999 is not a multiple of 11. You can cross check that. Okay. So the closest number is 9990. That is a multiple of 11. Okay, so this will give us 990 plus 10. But plus 10, 10 I, I will break as 11 minus 1. So I'll write it as 1001 minus 1. 1001 is a multiple of 11. 990 plus 11. Okay, so this is done. Then 6 into 9999, which is a multiple of 11, plus 1. Plus 2 into 10 is for 5. So again, this will be... In Okay, the same logic will apply. So 10 to the power 5 will be whatever 1 lakh, 1 lakh 1, 
is divisible by 11. Now, if you are seeing some pattern already, that's good, but now I'm going to show you a pattern. Okay, I'll not get into these. Essentially, the same pattern will repeat. So, this is 4 and some multiple of 11 minus 5. Right? So, I'm ignoring, I, I can take this multiple of 11 separately because this is definitely divisible by 11. I don't need to worry about it. Just need to worry whether whatever is left that is divisible by 11 or not. So again, this is a multiple of 11, 99. So it is 3. Again, 1001 is a multiple of 11. So I can ignore it. Similarly here, 6 minus 2. So you can see that alternate digits. Um, this was 1. Sorry, this was plus. Okay, so alternate digits have different signs plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. That's why we are adding alternate digits and subtracting the sums because of this logic. You know, it's a comp I know it's a complicated logic, but this is the logic that I could understand probably by reverse engineering uh, but yeah this is uh, a logic why divisibility rule of 11 works okay I hope this video helps uh, in understanding something that you never wanted to understand why divisibility rules work